We're glad to know you're still there. And uh, this is the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. 94% of elected offices are with tribunal as INEX credibility sinks. That is the topic of discussion here. And we have as our guest, Mr. Biodun Showomi, a political analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Showomi. Hello, good morning. Okay, good. Uh, we're talking, INEG, we're talking about the fact that uh, the credibility of this electoral body, according to reports, is sinking lower and lower and lower. According to a report on Guardian yesterday, uh, we have 1,280 offices contested for. And of that number, we have 1,209 in courts. Now, this tells you that 94% of the cases are in court, which means the credibility of INEC is being questioned. Yet, INEC uh, holds that they did everything they're supposed to do, and whatever has happened is not their fault. I don't know how we can marry the stance of INEC and even the Nigerian, uh, Nigerian politicians whose... Uh, who are favored by whatever INEC has done to tell the external bodies and others to stay off Nigeria that we did what we should do and we did it very well. So now that we, are, we have the data and know that 94% of these um, cases are in court, what do you make of all, the, all these things? Yes. Um, we are practicing presidential Dem uh, democracy, whereby it's winner takes all. And therefore, you have a situation where politicians of all who's and cries, you know, are bidding to control the few offices available. And once you lose an election, you know, except you challenge it through the legal system, then you'll have to wait for another four years. So one of the factors responsible for the desperation in going to court is simply because of the huge amount of money involved in contesting elections in Nigeria. And uh, because of the enormous resources committed, you are bound to find politicians so desperate to ensure that they are able to scale through in elections. And if they fail, then they start experimenting with other methods of getting into office. And that is exactly what is responsible, you know, for the high number of cases uh, in court. It's not about the conduct of the elections, because we are not going to bring angels to conduct elections in Nigeria. And that is why in virtually every climb where you have presidential system of government, the threshold is always substantial compliance with the electoral rules. Basically, that means that they know that big human beings that will conduct elections, it may not be perfect. But is it imperfect to the extent that it will, uh, it will bend the election or it will create distortions in terms of results or it will undermine democracy? So as long as you don't have substantial non-compliance, then politicians should assert the verdict of um, INEC, the Electoral Commission. But what we have seen over the years is an increase in attacks on INEC integrity. And once we continue to attack the integrity of the electoral umpire, once results are announced, we are bound to have those who lose election to have a feel that, look, we need to use the court to examine what has been done by INEC. And that is what we are going through currently. What is alarming is the fact that most politicians that contested the last election are not willing to accept the results of the umpire. Even as we are speaking, the judiciary is also being attacked. You know, that they have to undermine the judiciary even though cases are in court, they are yet to know the verdict. The same politicians 
have been trying to undermine the integrity of the judiciary. So that tells you it's about the presidential system of government, where it is winner takes all. My own panacea is that we need to restructure this country, restructure our polity, and introduce, go back to parliamentary system, where you would only have a percentage, the percentage of seats on the basis of what percentage of votes you have in any election. And for instance, you cannot have 40% votes and expect to control the whole parliament. You would have to, other parties that score the 60%, even though they may not have the majority of the votes, but they would have representation in line with the number of votes they have. So you have a situation where the party that's called the highest votes will have to go into an alliance with a party, with another party, in order to form government. This will ensure that everybody becomes stakeholder in line with the percentage of votes scored. Then we won't have a situation where it is winner takes all. Otherwise, you will ask a question: What happens to the projects, the plans, the programs which those who lost the election voted for. Does it mean they won't have a voice in government? And under the presidential system of government, you, you don't. It's will not take some. It's tyranny of majority rule. And that is why this has to be changed to a parliamentary system where everybody will be stakeholders and everybody's voice will count through their representatives. Well, you seem to place the blame on the politicians more. Um, right now, we're talking about the credibility of INEC or otherwise. Are you saying what they did was, uh, was right and everything that is playing out is because of, let, permit the word, selfishness of the politicians who want at all costs to be there? Okay, this desperation of politicians who want at all costs to be there. Because if the election, like a lot of people are saying, had been as transparent as possible, the litigations would have been less. For instance, I don't know how many people were shouting uh, wolf when the 1993, I think, election was done, uh, the option A4. It seemed at that moment it was the most transparent election, and a lot of people were comfortable with it, even though it turned out that that administration never saw the light of day. So don't you think the transparency of INEC would have lent a great uh, um, hand in we not having to spend so much money in the courts anymore. Yes, um, I don't think it's about the transparency of INEC because INEC will only be transparent up to the extent that the electoral hacks allow INEC to be. You will realize that the issue of um, transparency is well addressed in the electoral act. Every single contestant or political aspirant have a right to have an electoral agent. Results will be counted at the polling unit. Results will be issued, signed by all the agents of all the contestants at the polling unit. What can be more transparent than that? Because once you do that at the polling unit, INEC cannot announce a different result because you have the original result issued at the polling unit. You know, to challenge whatever decision or result announced by INEC, which uh, differs from what you have. And that is very clear. The issue of transmission of results is a totally different matter. Because the law provides for collation of results manually. That is the electoral act. INEC could not have done it in any other way because it will not be in cons consonance with the laws, with the electoral act. So INEC did exactly what the electoral act allows them to do, collate the results manually. And then for ease of transparency, INEC on its own agreed that these results will be posted on its um, portal, you know, which is the IRF we are talking about. IRF is not about coalition of results. 
It's about viewing of results. That is what IRF is about. And the law allows for INEC to do what they have done. So within the context of the Electoral Act, INEC <coughs> has acted correctly. What we should be saying is that we need to go back and review the Electoral Act if we so desire that results should be collated electronically then we need to review the Electoral Act and make it mandatory on INEC to ensure that results are collated ele electronically. Once we don't do that, once we have not changed the Electoral Act, INEC will be seen to have done what they are supposed to do under the law. Because there is no other way out. The rule of law will have to guide us in this democracy. We cannot do otherwise. And where you have two or more people competing, you know, for a particular post, you will always have competing interests and competing claims. The bottom line is for the electoral umpire to be seen to be fair, and to be fair indeed, and the only way you can ensure that is by complying with the electoral act. So when you look at the cases already decided in court, I think it's only one or two cases that the results declared were made invalid due to the fact that either due to um, overvoting or no sorry due to um, um, cancellation of results than necessary in virtually all other cases it has always been about the the pre uh, qualification to contest that election or whether somebody fought certificate or one thing or the other that is what you have and that is not the responsibility of INEC to ensure that candidates presented by political parties are valid certificates. That is the problem of the political parties, mm. which are filled in them. Okay. So uh, when you look at the issues dispassionately, you probably will come to, a, to, to, to the same position like mine. Well, uh, you seem to have vindicated INEC, uh, but when you were talking about uh, agents, it just, something just uh, came to my memory, something I witnessed as well. Uh, there was an administration here in Lagos, it served only one tenor. And when the elections came and the people were supposed to go to the polls, um, the election was held and one candidate was uh, supposedly uh, having the upper hand. And then the evening of the election day, everybody was gathered at, I think, Protea Hotel in Ikeja and shown some, some documents that they were supposed to be signed by agents, and so far those documents have not been given to any agent because no agent showed up, even though I was part of a monitoring team that was going around uh, the state and seeing that there were agents in every po polling unit and elections were being carried out. But these people came from, uh, that was primaries election anyway for a particular political party. So these people came from Abuja as the people sent by the, the team, the, the, the party, and they came and told us that that election was a sham election because nobody came forward for those forms and the election that held was not held, in quote. So they were going to go back to Abuja and then one day soon they are going to announce a date for a real election to take place. That team was led by Clement Ebri of Cross River State. They went to Abuja. And the date was not announced. It was the winner of an election that they claimed never happened that was announced. I remember that very well because it never leaves my head. It was, it was abracadabra. So when you were talking about political agents, that's what I just remembered. But now, uh, that's not the issue. The issue is, since you have tabled the things that you feel are the problems of our uh, electioneering process, um, you have proffered some of the solutions. We'd like to have, uh, for purpose of emphasis, what you think should be done subsequently to make sure that we cut down the number of people that go to the courts to do this. What role INEC can play and what role the people themselves, not politicians now, the people themselves, because it's from the people that politicians come, can play to make sure that we, are, we can do an election and get it done with within the same month that we did the elections. Before we wrap up, please. Yes, the last election, there is no doubt that there are some problems in Lagos, particularly when um, we had the gubernatorial elections. This 
problems were widely reported in some parts of Lagos. <clears throat> Not in all parts, all parts of Lagos State. We should not forget one thing. The issue is about substantial compliance. Mm -hmm. It is also true that it may have been impossible for some candidate agents to be at some polling units where there are problems. So therefore, they were not able to sign the result sheets. But the issue is this. In line with the requirement of the Electoral Act, are those violations Will, will they constitute substantial non-compliance, particularly when you have five divisions in the state, which is Ikorodu, Epe, Badagri, Ikeja, and uh, Lagos Island? Will they, will a problems in one or two constitute substantial non-compliance? I think that's left for the court to decide. Mm. From the judgment of the court of first instance, which is the tribunal of governorship, the court failed to agree with the, the petitioners that there was substantial non-compliance. Basically, an position has been adopted. And it is not anyone's fault. It's always about how elections are conducted ev everywhere, even in the United States of America. It's about substantial compliance with the electoral laws. Where you have substantial compliance, then the courts are not likely going to agree that to overturn the result of an election. I mean, we, see, we saw what happened in Adamawa, how an INEC break decided to, uh, to, to announce results in a way that did not comply with the, comply with the electoral law. The INEC chairman did the right thing at that point in time by suspending it. And that INEC break today has been removed from office. But the courts are looking into petitions. Beg your pardon. Hello? Yes, please wrap up. So the courts are looking into those petitions. We have seen how they have ad accepted some grounds. And we have also seen how they rejected some. So therefore, except you have substantial non-compliance, that is always the threshold. That is the problem. And that is very, very difficult to prove when it comes to gubernatorial or presidential, because you have to prove non-compliance in every polling unit where you are disputing the results. Mm. Meanwhile, electoral cases are time-bound. You cannot exceed the time, you know, for, 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 for okay. uh, uh, making your presentation to the court, because right. the court has only 180 days okay. to look into it before the tribunal stands resolved. Okay. So that is always the problem. Mm. We need to look at our electoral system again. Mm. In my view, it's about the political system we are practicing, which is presidential system of government. All right. We will always have this hiccups. We need to change it to parliamentary system of government. Okay. Well, we do hope that uh, all uh, stakeholders will be up and doing and make sure that the off-season elections that are coming up will, uh, will return the confidence that we put on INEC and the political class to do the needful so that we have peace in our uh, society. Thank you so much, Mr. Biodun Shoumi, for coming on the program this morning. Thank you for having me. Mr. Biodun Shoumi is a political analyst. He joined us to talk about the fact that reports have gone that 94% of elected offices are with tribunal and INEC's uh, credibility has sunk. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll look at what uh, the plastics are doing to our environment and how dangerous that can be. Stay with us. <laughs>